Hey guys, this is Rebecca. I'm Jim's wife, and for those of you who are new to the channel, I've done a few science videos for him in the past, which we will link those down below. Um, I'm also the STEM director at a private school, uh, Gateway Legacy Christian Academy, and I also teach the biology classes there. So today we are going to talk about the thermocline. So many of you are probably like myself where you enjoy swimming in your lakes or ponds or any of your freshwater systems that you have around you and you're swimming along this nice warm water and you dip your toes down deep or maybe you jump in and you feel this ice cold water and you're just like, oh, what is that? You've just come in contact with the thermocline. So the thermocline literally means a rapid change in temperature. So you feel that nice warm water and then all of a sudden, bam, cold water. Okay, so that's that rapid change in temperature. So as the STEM director, I love hands-on experimentation and I love visuals. So I've got a red and a blue cup here. This blue cup is going to represent that cold water that is within the hypolimnion. Hypolimnion is what that's called. So I'm going to pour that in here. Okay, so this is our cold bottom water. And this red cup is going to represent our warm water, our warm surface water, okay? That's being warmed by the sun, it's being churned. This is known, churned by the wind, this is known as the epilimnion, or the upper layer of your lake, okay? So we're just gonna pour some of this in here. And this is oil. And what happens when oil and water come together? They separate. So you can see here this nice defined line, okay? That represents the thermocline. The thermocline resides within your metalimnion, which is just that layer in between your epilimnion, this upper layer that's gonna have your warmer waters during uh, spring, summer, fall. And then this hypolimnion down here, this is your colder waters. Now, um, as far as fishing goes, generally, and it, this all depends on a whole bunch of different variables. But generally, down here in this hypolimnion, where this colder water is, there's not as much dissolved oxygen. So you're not gonna find a lot of your fish down here. They're gonna wanna be up here in these warmer waters where there's more available oxygen to them. Also, sunlight can penetrate down, um, among many other things. So generally, you're gonna find above that thermocline. Now, in some instances, and some of you may even experience where you're really killing it, down where you believe below the thermocline is. And that could be, it could be uh, different for your lake. And some lakes don't experience lake stratification, which is this layering that you see here, uh, because they have a lot of current moving through it or a lot of wind action. All of those keep those bodies of water constantly churning. And so it's harder for those lakes just completely stratus, excuse me, to completely stratify. So you're gonna have more dissolved oxygen available throughout the entire lake. So guys, again, this is the thermocline. You can keep, um, this visual really is a representation of what you may be seeing. I know some fish finders can pick up your thermocline. Um, some can't, but generally, this is what's happening in your water whenever you experience that really cold water and those upper warmer waters. Remember, higher dissolved oxygen is gonna be above it and that lower dissolved oxygen to maybe sometimes an anoxic situation where there's really not very much dissolved oxygen at all below it. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, do keep a lookout. I'll be doing a couple more videos on the trophic status of your lakes, as well as the different zones of a freshwater system. So thanks for watching, guys. Smash that thumbs up, and I'll talk to you soon.